Good morning, everyone. I'm so happy to see you. Glad that you're a part of our service today. I know there are people at home watching us on television, and we're glad they're doing that. They're a part of this as well. So welcome to what God's going to be doing today. I have a couple of announcements for you. Uh, one is that this Wednesday at 6.30, we will be taking the cover off the pool. The pool will be open in July, we hope, and uh, on Saturdays and also during camp meeting. But we need help this Wednesday. So if you can come out at 6.30 and help us, um, help us take the cover off the pool, which I understand is quite an adventure, uh, come and join us for that. Um, also, I wanted to, to mention that, of course, camp meeting is coming up July 17th to the 22nd. Hope you have that on your calendar. And I also wanted today to say thank you to those people, those men and women who have gone on before us to preserve our country. This is Memorial Day and we are so very uh, glad that these folks have made it possible for us to be free. And so we honor them today and say thanks. Um, it's, not, it's not a time for making jokes or even for telling stories. In some ways, it's, uh, it's a day when we remember people who have meant so much to us. And so let's have a quick prayer. Lord, we thank you so much for the fact that um, we are as free a country as we are. And we know, Lord, that's due to the sacrifices made by many people. I know stories could be told from, from the pews today about the folks that lived heroically and died. And so we're grateful for them, and we're grateful that we are a nation that is secure and uh, because of what their sacrifices. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's say together our service for the Lord's Day, our call to worship. It's found in your bulletin. God is waiting for us with a tender heart and a searching question. God is ready for us with truth and wisdom from a deep well. God is blessing us with springs of living water. God is sending us to sing, pray, and witness every day. God is here. Let the conversation begin. Our hymn is number 281, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Let's stand together as we sing. confession first the call when we pray we speak to God when we pray God speaks to us let us therefore enter into dialogue with our creator first silently and then together
nap together. We confess without reservation that our dialogue with you, O oh God, is not really a dialogue. Too often we ask without listening, complain without offering thanksgiving. We pray and cannot understand why we get no response. Awaken us to wonder. If you called, would we, would we answer? Or would you get a busy signal? Would you leave a message and get no answer in return? We confess anew our impatience and our unwillingness to sit in the holy stillness of your presence. Forgive us, loving God. Thank you for letting us try again. In this minute of silence, let us be still and listen to what you would say to us this day. Brothers and sisters, even when we try and fail again and again, God loves us still. In the richness of God's mercy, we accept the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding. In the name of Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters, you are forgiven. Amen. It seems that uh, a doctor who went to Emory and a lawyer who went to Mercer University, my alma mater, and a Georgia Tech graduate were in trouble. They were lined up and they each had to be executed by a guillotine. So the Emory doctor, uh, he looked up and he said, they, they pushed the button and the, the big guillotine knife came down and stopped. 
And of course, the tradition is if you, uh, if you are being killed and the apparatus doesn't work, it means God's will is that you will not die. So the Henry lawyer was very grateful for this. And then the uh, Mercer lawyer, uh, the same thing happened. The, the blade came down and stopped. And then it was the Georgia Tech grad's turn. And as they placed him in the guillotine, he looked up and he said, I think I figured out what's going wrong. <laughs> he figured out what's going wrong. I figured I could get by that, that way without bringing in the University of Georgia. And I would come out better, right? This morning we we're going to be talking about faith, about bold people who understand what faith is. So hear now God's word. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval, and by faith we understand that the words, the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. And then down to verse 6. And without faith it's impossible to please God, for whoever would approach him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, we thank you so much for this word, and it's, um, it's a very difficult in some ways idea to talk about. And so, Lord, help, it, help us today as we examine it, and may we learn things from it that you want to teach us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, first of all, uh, what faith is not. Faith is not a quantity. In other words, uh, a lot of people say if people get sick or we go through a difficult time together, where, uh, like we're going with the pandemic and people get sick and they'll say, if you only had enough faith, this wouldn't have happened. In churches, sometimes it's a way of judging other people. You know, if they get sick or they lose their money or they lose a child or something terrible goes on, then uh, the people who are in charge say, those bad things would not have happened if you, if you had faith. Brothers and sisters, that is not what faith is. It's not a quantity that allows us to bind God, nor is it a quantity which can be judged by others to put us down. Faith is something else different from that. Amen? Faith is not all about judgment. It can't be. It has to do with the way that God needs to be approached and who God is. So that's the first thing that faith is not. The second thing that faith is not... Um, is it's not a leap in the dark. Some people will say to you that it, what faith is, is is really though God does not exist or that God's not real or, or you know, people that believe that way, many of whom are out there today, they will deny the existence of God and say, well, I don't really believe God is there, but I'm going to leap into the dark and believe in him anyway. But faith is not exactly like that because, you see, God's taken the initiative with us to help us to understand that he does exist and that he loves us and cares about us. And we can see that so clearly on the cross, can't we? It's not a leap in the dark when you see how much God loves us. So to have faith in that God who sent his own son to die for us and a son who was obedient enough to die for us and a spirit that comes to us and makes it come alive in our lives, when all that stuff is operating, then having faith is not a leap in the dark but it can be scary and difficult sometimes to exercise our faith, can it? To believe that God is at work when maybe the circumstances don't always show it. So faith is, again, it's tough to grasp sometimes, but I think if we can understand it more, we can apply it more to our lives. And finally, I think uh, faith is not a commodity, but a gift. In other words, it's God who takes the initiative in giving us faith. It's not something that we get because we want it or we have it. It comes to us because God takes the initiative and gives us the ability to trust in him. So it's something, it's a, it's a matter of grace that puts us in that place and time. We Presbyterians are not afraid of this word grace. We're not afraid of God's sovereignty. We're not afraid of the fact that God loves us in a particular way. We believe that those things are true. 
And so we say that faith is not a commodity, but a gift. It's given to us to enable us to live our lives in Christ. And that's what faith is. So that's three things that faith is not. It's not a commodity. It's not a leap in the dark. It's not a matter of earning enough of it to earn God's favor, because God's favor comes by grace. So what is faith then? I want to read you Peterson's version of this passage, the first three verses. The fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God, this faith, is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. It's our handle on what we can't see. The act of faith is what distinguishes our ancestors and sets them above the crowd. By faith, we see the world called into existence. By God's word, what we see created by God and what we, by what we don't see. So in other words, uh, faith is a foundational thing that comes into our life and enables us to see things differently. You know, it's, it's a scary thing. Lots of people believe in only what they can see and feel and touch. Can you imagine, can you imagine an existence that's like that? How how sterile that must be, how hard that must be to live in such a world where all circumstances and everything that happens is all a matter of chance. It's all a matter of what kind of rolls around. It's God doesn't exist in that kind of world, I think, for a lot of people. I remember this story about a woman who would get up and praise the Lord every morning, and she would, she'd stand on the street corner and say, Hallelujah, glory to God, and so on and so forth. And uh, she lived next door to an atheist, and he would stand up and just, just tear down everything that she said. And so, but she wouldn't stop. She just kept on praising God and telling people that they needed to know and love God. And he kept on saying those things. Well, one day she cried out. She said, Lord, send somebody to help me. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm out of food. I don't have any money. Lord, won't you help me? I stand out here and praise you every day, and, and I need your help now. And so when she got home that day, sure enough, the, her, the, in front of her room, in front of her house, there was several big bags of groceries. And so she started to praise God and tell him, God how great he is. And out jumped the atheist. And he said, I got you now. God did not send you those groceries. I brought those groceries. And she said, yeah. And, you know, and, and the God used the devil to bring them to me. So faith is fundamentally a a way of looking at the world where you decide that you're going to trust and know God. That's what faith is. It's given to us as a gift, and then we respond to it. All these characters in this chapter are all the heroes of the Bible, and you can read through it and see all the different ways that God took the initiative in these people's lives, and why they became a hero is that they said yes to them. So faith was saying yes to God as God called them into doing all kinds of wonderful and amazing things. Um, Relying upon God in a world where people don't, God's an afterthought when they've tried everything else, but faith is not doing it that way, not living life that way. It's, It's being positive. With faith, you're able to see through circumstances to the God behind everything that's there. You know, it's like we've gone through this terrible time and and I know lots of people have struggled, and I know many of you have struggled with losses in your life, and I know many of you are worried about relatives and friends, and you, people are beginning to come through it, but still we've, we've struggled, we've worried about things. But I know that many of you, too, have gotten through this because you believe that God's got a plan, and you were able to see through this dark curtain of time and believe that somehow, some way, God's going to bring you through because you know that God is good. And you know that he loves you, and you know that somehow, some way, you're going to make it through this time, and even the worst things, you're going to survive because God will bring you through it, especially if you can find a way to trust God. Amen? And so that's so much about what our lives are. You know, we really, we really have faith when we look at circumstances and God gives us eyes to see how God is at work. And have no doubt, brothers and sisters, God is at work. Amen? Amen. Even during this time. 
so our eyes are open to what God is doing, and it may be painfully difficult to live through that time. But the alternatives to having faith is to play act your way through life and act like there's nothing wrong or to live in despair. And I think those are the two ways people are reacting. People are putting a brave face on things and they're just, they're acting like everything is okay, but they know deep in their heart that it's not okay. So many people are in despair about this situation. And that's why faith is a good alternative to that. We, we need to tell people that if you will trust God, God will work, and God will be at work in the situation. I don't, don't min minimize what people have gone through during this time and what you've gone through, but I know, too, that sometimes it's the people who struggle the most who find out that God is there even as they're going through it. I don't always understand that. I, I, I think some of the burdens that people carry would, would crush me, but they don't crush these people because they've experienced God's love and they've made a decision to trust God through it. I was thinking about your church. Now this church here, our church, has lived by faith, hasn't it? Since 1827, isn't that right? 1827. Can you imagine all the times they had to trust God since 1827? Can you imagine how the church survived and grew and flourished because people had faith? People had faith to build that campground out there, and, you know, camp meeting has gone on for years, and I, th I would say thousands of people have probably been touched by it. Since 1827, since around that time, uh, when they, they had the first camp meeting until now, thousands of people have been touched by it. It was because people had faith to build this campground and, and to continue to develop it. And over the years, great things have happened in people's lives because of it. People have found revival in their life. And it's because the people who started and began it and the people who maintained it and continued to believe in it had faith. They had faith, right? And I think in lots and lots of ways, a lot of the things, you had faith when you built this building. You had faith when you put in the swimming pool as a ministry to the community, not just to the campground. You had faith when you had mission camps here. You had faith when you, all the things that you could probably tell me that I don't even know about because I'm so new. You've seen God work because people had faith. They believed that God was at work and they put their life on the line for it. They put their trust in it. And so I tell you, brothers and sisters, um, I know that you have a lot to be grateful for. I understand we had 45 families come last week to the food pantry. I know it won't be long before things like the is it three R program starts back up and three what? Three F program. Sorry, I got the letter wrong. Um, you know that'll be starting back soon. I know that uh, we'll be getting who knows when we'll get Sunday school going again and choir and all these things. But uh, this will all happen because we still believe that God's at work at Smyrna Presbyterian Church. Raise your hand if you believe that God's still at work here. God has a future for this church. God wants to, as God has worked in the past, God is going to work again, brothers and sisters, and we can believe that. We're going to come through this, and we're going to see that God has a plan and a future for this church because we've decided to live by faith. Lord, we thank you for the truth of this, and I know that you're always speaking to us, and we just need to listen, and we need to act on what you say, and as you speak to us, Lord, we know that you will give us the gift of faith that we'll need to respond to. And Lord, help us not to settle. Help us not just to live the same way we lived the day before. Help us to live, Lord, uh, in faith. Take us on the edge, Lord. Take us out there where bold people go. Both individually and as a church, may we move out from this place. And may we not just be a church here on this property. May our footprint in this community be even greater than we have now. Uh, and may people say about this church that God's really at work there. You can tell it. They see that every time, Lord, in this food pantry, and I know there's, there's going to be many more things like that. They see it that way when we host two other churches beside our own. They see it, Lord, at the campground and how the camp meeting happens uh, every year, unless there's a terrible thing that happens that keeps us from doing it. Lord, just keep us moving on the way uh, that you want us to go. Help us continue to be drawn to the edge of things. 
Uh, this we pray, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's proclaim our faith and trust in the Lord as we sing hymn 383, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. Stand as we sing. wonderful thing that we get to be here and proclaim our faith. Say with me the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Together, Lord, we come to you and pray that you will be for us all the things that you are for others, but even more. We want to know you, Lord. We want to love you. We want to follow you. We want to walk in your footsteps. Give us grace. Give us faith. Give us courage, Lord, as we try to be what you've called us to be. And Lord, while we thank you for the service of our military today, and thank you for the, the way in which they sacrifice for us, we also thank you, Lord, for the fact that you've done wonderful things here at this church, and we pray that you would continue to do so. And we know, Lord, there are people who are hurting right now because they're losing someone or have already lost someone, because they're worried about a child or a grandchild, because they're worried about a spouse. Oh, Lord, come alongside every one of them and give each of them your faith to believe that you will never desert or leave them. 
And we thank you, Lord, for teaching us that prayer that you taught us to pray. Let's say it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, thank you for how you generously give to this church. The good stewardship continues to amaze me. And we know that it's all because something is going on in your heart that makes you want to be generous. And so we are grateful for that. And Lord, we just ask that you take what we give and multiply it and use it, that your kingdom might be built. In Jesus' name, amen. Our hymn is number 420, God of Grace and God of Glory. Please stand. and sisters go from this place with a clear understanding that you have faith that can move mountains and as you go may the love of the father the grace of the lord jesus christ and the power and the presence of the holy spirit go with you both now and forever and all god's people said amen, amen.